Uh, greetings, fellow Whovians. Whovian Queen here. Hope I have a good week so far. We're a lucky love at the 11 Doctor Era. Now continues on with one of my favorite episodes of this series, The Doctor's Wife. The 11 Doctor Amy and Rory follow a distress call by the identification of the Time Lord, the Corsair, the Corsair, to an asteroid outside the universe. After landing in a junkyard, the TARDIS shuts down and its matrix disappears. The asteroid, called, called House, removes the matrix and places it in the body of a woman named Idris. The Doctor discovers the Corsair and hundreds of other Time Lords on the asteroid were murdered by House, and that two, and the two inhabitants of the asteroid, Uncle and Auntie, are constructed from the body parts of Time Lords. Upon learning that the Doctor is the last Time Lord and that no more will ever arrive, House transfers his consciousness into the TARDIS to escape from the rift. Amy and Rory are trapped inside as the house controlled TARDIS dematerializes. Uncle and Auntie are allowed to die. The Doctor learns that Idris contains the personality of the TARDIS's matrix and that they can talk to each other for the first time. With the minutes before her body fails, Idris reveals that House had stranded many TARDISes before and that his pocket universe is hours away from collapsing. The Doctor and Idris work together to construct a makeshift TARDIS from scraps and then pursue House. Aboard the Doctor's TARDIS, House threatens to kill Amy and Rory. He plays with their senses as they try to flee through the corridors and then sends an Ood called Nephew after them. Idris makes a second connection with Rory to give him direction to a secondary control room where he and Amy are able to lower the TARDIS shields. This allows the TARDIS to land the makeshift TARDIS in the secondary control room, which atomizes Nephew. House still the secondary control room as he prepares to break through the rift to the main universe, which the Doctor anticipates. The TARDIS' safety protocols transfer them to the main control room, where the dying interest releases the TARDIS' matrix back, back to the TARDIS, destroying House. A remnant of the TARDIS' matrix, and interest's body, states that she will not be able to speak again to the Doctor, but will be there for him. Interest's body then disappears as the TARDIS matrix is fully restored. Mm. Let's look at some continuity surrounding this episode. The Doctor first altering the control room's appearance as changing the desktop, desktop theme, as the Fifth Doctor does in Time Crash. Like the Third Doctor in Inferno, the Doctor and Idris operate a TARDIS console without an outer TARDIS shell. The Doctor also jettisons TARDIS rooms to create thrust, as he had previously done in stories such as Legopolis and Castrovalva. The Doctor and Missy killed all of the Time Lords, alluding to the events of the Time War. In the War Games, the Second Doctor contacted the Time Lords using cubes similar to, the, to those seen in this episode. The Doctor refers to himself as a madman with a box, appraising Amy's and his own description of, of himself in the Eleventh Hour. The Doctor refers to Nephew as another Ood I failed to save. In the Satan Pit, the Doctor commented that he did not have time to save the Ood. Idris's cryptic words, the only water in the forest is the river, are explained in the mid-series finale, A Good Man Goes to War. And now let's take a look at the production of this episode, beginning with the writing. During a dinner with incoming executive producer Stephen Moffat, writer Neil Gaiman asked Moffat if he could write an episode. In an interview, Gaiman stated, quote, I came up with something that was one of those things where you thought that nobody's done that before. The episode was originally titled The House of Nothing before a game had sat down to write it. That was changed to Bigger on the Inside. This title remained until about six weeks before the episode aired, but the crew was beginning to worry that Bigger on the Inside would give away the surprise that Idris was the TARDIS, so it was changed. The Doctor's Wife was also a fake title attached to the 1984 serial The Caves of Androzani. Then producer Johnny the Turner had changed the title to that on his planning board in an attempt to weed out a specific leak in his office. Gamma suggested that they make an episode which centers on the TARDIS itself, which is not but done which was not but which was not done before the series, before the entire series, since it began in nineteen sixty three. The original plan focused on the idea of the doctor being pursued by an enemy inside the TARDIS, but went through several subsequent changes. Gaiman changed the plan to focus on the companion due to the EI due to the Doctor's knowledge of a ship making it too easy for him to escape his enemy, he made the TARDIS a threat rather than just a specific alien to avoid making a simple cat and mouse game. He then included the idea of Idris to account for what happened to the TARDIS's mind during this attack. The central idea was a what if scenario to see what would happen if the Doctor and the TARDIS got to talk together. 
I'm often like the idea of featuring the TARDIS as a woman, believing this to be the ultimate love story for the Doctor. Gaiman began writing this episode before Matt Smith was even cast as the 11th Doctor. Gaiman had to visit David Tennant's performance in the first draft, knowing Smith would play the Doctor differently. Despite this, he had no issue writing the dialogue. The episode was originally slated for, slated for the 11th episode of the 5th series. However, it was slated to the 6th series because of budget issues. The 11th episode would be replaced with a lodger. Even so, Game was forced to operate with less money than he would have liked. For instance, he had to scrap a scene set in the TARDIS' swimming pool. Instead of being able to use a monster of his own, he had to dis- of his own design, he had to use an ood. The move to the sixth series also meant Gaiman had to include Rory, who had ceased to exist in the original slot in the fifth series. With Rory included, Gaiman had to reshape much of the second half of the episode, featuring Amy being on the run of the TARDIS. In the original draft where Amy was the only companion, Gaiman had added a heartbreaking monologue by the character, further stating you get to see what it's like to be the companion from the companion's point of view, but you got to talk about essentially in that version how sad it is in some ways. One day something will happen to her, she'll get married, she'll get eaten by monsters, she'll die, she'll get sick of this, but he'll go on forever. At a certain point, Gaiman became tired of rewriting drafts and asked Stephen Moffat for help. Moffat wrote in what Gaiman called several of the episode's best lines, and rapidly rewrote several scenes with budget problems harmed filming locations. Hmm. And now on to the casting. In September to 2010, Saran Jones announced she was cast as a guest spot on Doctor Who as Idris for an episode of the sixth series of Doctor Who. Jones previously played Mona Lisa in the Sarah Jane Adventures episode Mona Lisa's Revenge. Sometime after appearing on Sarah Jane Adventures, Jones was contacted to appear on Doctor Who at Gamer's request because they were looking for an actress who was odd, beautiful but strange looking, and quite funny. Moffat and Leon described Idris as sexy plus motherly plus utterly mad plus sincere. During a read through the script, the producers asked her to neutralize her accent a bit because they did not want Jones to be a northerner or have a standard accent, but to act kind of like the Doctor. In March 2011, Game of Confirmed Michael Sheen would also get star in, epi- in the episode to voice a character. Adrian Schiller previously appeared in the Eight Doctor audio drama Timeworks, where he played Xanath. And now, finally, on to filming. The Doctor's Wife was planned as the third episode in the 2011 series but the order was changed during the production process. Initial production occurred in September, with the game of visiting the set during production and period, production period and filming for the Associated Confidential. Additional, additional filming took place in October 2010, with the guest star Saran Jones having been filmed for green screen special effects. The scenes where Amy and Rory are on the run allowed the audience to explore the TARDIS outside the control room, something that the producers had wanted to do for a while. A series of corridors were, re- were constructed and retained for future use. The episode featured the return of the older TARDIS control room, TARDIS control room from the Christopher Eccleston and David Tennant era. Gaiman had originally wanted to reconstruct a console room from the original series, but the cost pro- pro- proved prohibitive. The set was retained after filming for the eleventh hour, but has since been removed to become part of the Doctor Who Experience exhibit. After Arthur Darvill noted the. Fl- Though the floor of the Elder's Head had cheese grater like quality to it, so when the scene called for the cast to fall on it, they found it uncomfortable to stay down for a long period of time. The Doctor's Wife features a makeshift TARDIS console, which is piloted by the Doctor and Idris. The, cons- the console was designed by Susanna Leah, a schoolgirl from, t- from Todd Morden, who won a competition on Blue Peter, the children's program that challenges viewers to imagine a TARDIS console based on household objects. Leah's design was selected by Moffat, Edward Thomas, the production designer for the previous series, and Tim Level, the Blue Peter editor, along with final out, following final input among the three age group winners from, from Smith. Michael Pickwood, the production designer for Series 6, commented that Leah's design captured the nature of bits and pieces of what TARDIS consoles have been in the past, as well as the nature of the makeshift console needed for this episode. The drawing was redesigned faithfully by, by the production team into the prop for the show, including the use of a coat hanger to start the makeshift TARDIS. Leo was brought by Blue Peter to see both the set under construction and a location during filming of the makeshift TARDIS scenes, meeting Smith and the other actors and production crew. Character options will release a toy set 
to replace it based on the latest concert later in 2011. The house planet toy in the pocket universe was filmed on location at a quarry outside Cardiff. Nice. So overall, this is a very fun, enjoyable episode, and I like the fact that Doctor and Taurus finally get to talk, even if it's just for this one episode. So overall, I give The Doctor's Wife five sound screwdrivers out of five. And anyway, tune in next time as we take a look at The Rebel Flesh. Well, hope you enjoyed that review. Enjoyed that review. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it around. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified about when I upload videos. And if you want to, and if you want to help support this channel, then be sure to check out my Patreon page. Link as always is, the, is in the description below. Anyway, until next time, this is Hooping Queen saying, "Oh my giddy aunt!" When I say "run, run," I reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. Would you like a jelly baby? Fantastic! Allons y Geronimo! Bow ties are cool. Fezzes are cool, and. Stetsons are cool.